Hello, everybody, and welcome to session one of Experience You. I've got Josh Coles with me here today. Hi, Josh. Hello. If you're wondering who Josh is, he's the guy with the funny face that's in all of the videos that are here for the course. You'll see him right here in the middle. I'll wiggle his picture around a little bit. And uh, we're going to go through some of the questions that headline the video that Josh did and are also kind of central to the course that we're trying to teach over the next few weeks. So I thought it'd be fun to bring Josh in, sort of grill him a little bit about the university experience and see if we can't sort of get a window into what it's like, both once you've made it past a couple of years, and Josh, I think you're going, you're in your third year this year. Yep. And then also sort of take a look back for Josh and the stuff that he would have, uh, maybe some advice that he would have given himself if he had a chance to start over again. So the first question of the, the, the three questions that we got set up for this week is about courses. So uh, I guess to start off, to give the people some context, Josh, why don't you tell everybody what exactly it is you're taking at the university? Okay, uh, well, I'm a third year history student, so I'm a history major taking a French minor, but that's not how I started off. It's not what I thought I was going to be doing. Okay, just to, to clear a whole bunch of stuff up, I know one of the main questions that, that students always have when they come to the university, major, history, minor, can you walk us through what, let's start with a major first. What's a major? Um, the major is the main focus of your studies during your undergraduate degree. So it is what you're going to be taking the majority of courses in. The subject that you'll be taking the majority of courses in. Okay, so um, what are the major, what, what can you have as a major? Um, you can have uh, a major in, well, in arts you can have a major in like... Can I really um, major in basket weaving? Not basket weaving, but it's generally, uh, I'm trying to think of the term for it, but the, the major areas of study, so like uh, psychology, uh, history, English, sociology. So you're an arts major then, because all the ones you just chose are from the arts faculty. Well, I think I mentioned arts. <laughs> or if you were a science student, there you, go. you could major in biology or chemistry or physics or math or engineering. Or if you're a business student, well, that's kind of complicated. Okay. There aren't quite majors. No majors and majors. What about accounting? There you go. There you go. See? So, okay, so you say you're majoring in history and you've got a, you're doing a minor in French. Now, explain, now minor, I guess, is just the same thing as a major except less? Yes. Okay, fair enough. So why would anyone in their right mind have a major in history and a minor in French? How do you come to that decision? Um, well, I can give a bit of insight as to why I came to that decision. Um, I'm eventually planning on going into French history. Uh, I'm eventually planning on going into the education program, possibly at UPEI, possibly at an another school. And by having a major in history and a minor in French, those would count as two of my teachable subjects when I eventually became a teacher, if that was to happen in theory. So um, I'm most interested in history, but I realized that, um, for example, French would help me get a job teaching on Prince Edward Island. So that is... Um, another area where I take a significant amount of courses, but not as many courses as my major, history, uh, in order to help me get into, uh, maybe get a job or get into a graduate program down the road. Okay, so talk to me a little bit. You, you'd said that it wasn't where you started. You hadn't started with a history major in French. So what, what, about, what was it about the history courses that drew your attention? Can you tell me about one course that you took where you went, holy wow, that's something I, I just, I really want to do this. Um, let's think. Well, I'm, I really like the faculty in the history department. Um, as with most faculties in, uh, at UPEI, there's a very kind of core group of professors that you'll happen to take a few courses with if you happen to, to um, major in their department. So, for example, um, I had a course in, I believe it was either my first semester Canadian history course or my second semester Canadian history course with James Moran, who is one of the history profs, uh, as we t tend to say, prof, okay. at, uh, uh, at UPEI. And I really enjoyed his um, kind of introduction to Canadian history class. And I went into UPEI expecting to be a history major, but I didn't uh, really know until maybe the end of my first year that that's what I was going to do. So what kind of, what other courses did you take that, uh, that first year that maybe didn't end up being the kinds of things that you were interested in? Well, I was originally looking into, 
Well, I, this is what I had in my head. Okay. Um, that I was going to major in either history or English and minor in whatever I didn't major in plus French. So I was originally thinking, hmm, maybe I'll... Nice. Maybe I'll do, like, a history major and then an English and French minor because you can do, like, two minors, for right. example. Or maybe I'll do an English mi major with history and French minors. Um, it turns out to do that, you have to be fairly ambitious. And <laughs> it's not that I'm not ambitious, but I'm just kind of ambitious in, I would say, in different ways. I'm involved in more stuff on campus, but I, it takes a lot of work to do a major and then two minors. So I realized that I don't want to do English, and I dropped that from the kind of... Uh, Okay, so why? How how did you come? How did you come to the point where you said you had this plan? You want to do this and this and this and this and this. Where did you get all of the things? Where did you get the interest? Where? How did you figure that out when you were in high school before you came to university? Did you talk to somebody? Did you just magically have all this information in your head? Um, I I would say I got a lot of the direction in my first year from first year advise advisement. Oh, so you didn't have this before you started university. You only got that after first year. During first year. During first year. Yes. Okay. Um, because when I went to first year advisement counseling from student services, which is when you go in, you talk to um, a staff member of student services, they you tell them more or less what you're interested in, what you want to do, and they'll tell you um, the logical, like, which courses you would want to take, for example, in your first year in order to do that. So I said that I'm interested in history, I'm interested in English and French, and I eventually want to go into the education program, which happens after your first four years, or five years. <laughs> um, and they said, okay, well, for, for example, for, to get into an education program, you will have to have Psychology 101 and 102. Yep. You'll have to have a Modern Languages, a Math course, and a Science course. So this is a conversation you had with a counselor at the university who said, okay, so you're interested in history, and they took care of t trying to explain to you what courses you need to take. Yeah. Okay, so if I'm to understand how the whole course thing works, then what you need to do is get a good sense of the things that you're interested in and then go talk to the people who know how to get there. So yeah. all you really need to worry about is figure out what you're interested in. Pretty much, and what you eventually would like to do for a, for a career. And okay. obviously, every first year... Or a graduating high school student shouldn't be expected really to know what they're going to do when they mm -hmm. when they graduate four years later because four years when you're you know 17 18 19 20 that's a pretty long period of time and quite sure. often it changes but if you have an idea of what you're interested in what you're good at as well yeah because that's not that's pretty important um and what you kind of want to do the um the staff at student services are i mean that's, that's their job. They, they know exactly what courses you should be taking. Okay, so regardless of what university you're going to, there's a something student services, student support group that can actually come in and help you figure out what it is you need to be able to do. Okay, yeah. so if I, have ex if I know exactly what I want to do, then the people don't need to be listening to this conversation. If I have some idea of what I might like to do, talking to student services, good idea. Now, you had some idea. I'm sure you have some friends who didn't. Mm -hmm. If somebody thinks, I don't know at all what I'm going to do, but university sounds like something I'd like to try, what do they do? Um, well, at the very least, most people would have the idea, would, would know whether or not they want to go into arts or like sciences or business. Right. Okay. Um, so at the very least, let's assume that you know that you're interested in arts in general. So like, and that's just to make it easier because that's my example. So let's say you're interested in arts. Um, at the same time, you could go talk to the people, like talk to um, an advisement counselor and say that you're interested in that and they would give you kind of the rundown of what the options are for entry level um, arts courses in different disciplines. Okay. And it kind of goes from there. I know a lot of people, I give, um, yeah, like I, I, I've definitely heard of a lot of people that come into UPEI first year and they're taking just an array of different courses that happen to sound interesting to them, and they're doing it just because they don't necessarily know what they want. Right, and that's sure. not a problem. No. And lots of people start that way and end up being very successful. Yeah, and it, there's, there's, that's no less um, of an ideal way of going about things than, let's say, starting in like biology and then ended up ending up doing a year in bio, realizing that you don't like it, and then switching over to English. It's just, 
it's not like you're wasting your time doing that because that's when you realize exactly what you want to do. So I could start in science and end up in arts, and that's not really going to hurt me very much. Well, it might it might mean that in your later years, it, you're kind of uh, you don't have as much leeway in what courses you can take for electives and whatnot. You right. you might realize that if if for example you switch from you know chemistry to um, uh, psychology, let's say psychology, uh, chances are the courses that you took in your first year, which are all introductory science courses, mm -hmm. won't be applicable to your major. Um, so you might have to, yeah, you might have to kind of pay a bit more of, pay a bit more attention to what courses you're taking towards the end of your university career or cool. undergrad career. So I think that that gives us sort of a broad base of what the whole course thing is all about. We have courses, courses um, lead up to a major, so you can have history, uh, American history, and maybe that's part of your history program or your history major. We've covered all that. All right. So, and as you said in your video, if you said in that video, uh, going to class, good, take your courses, show up, all the rest of that stuff. So we talked a little bit about the courses themselves. Now, how, let's say that I'm going to go in and I want to go look around at courses. How exactly after, after three years of doing this, tell me the right way to do it. What's the right way to go picking courses? Um, that's a good question. I don't think I've mastered that yet. I know um, Rob Livingston, the student union president, wrote a blog post about that oh, did he? in the summer. I'm not sure. Cool, you go ahead. It, Keep talking, I'll find it. Um, I don't know. It's, it, once you get to a certain point, you realize what kind of route that you're, that you're going down. Um, it all kind of falls in line. I'm, I'm trying to think of like how I went about doing it in my first and second year. Honestly, my first year was essentially completely mapped out after my advisement um meeting mm -hmm. just blog i think it's dossier yeah, slash blog so and for me also like doing french i'm at, i'm in courses that are automatically kind of chosen for me uh every semester i don't really have the uh the option to um kind of deviate deviate away from that until later on in my uh like in my french minor there's the link okay I don't know. Maybe people should read that. Maybe <laughs> I should read that. Okay, so what, what you're telling me then, and that's that's as much information as anything else, what you're telling me is that picking courses is confusing for everybody. Yeah. It's difficult. There's a lot of choice to make. How much time do you spend picking courses? Um, is it something where you just go, eh, I'm going to take five minutes and pick my courses for this term? No, I think that... Um, oh, and just before I get into this, I want to say that it's... It's not always easy in a sense. You might know what courses you want to take, but you might not even be able to take all of them at the same time because there might be um, a conflict in scheduling and stuff. So it is a very big process. Scheduling. Yeah. Right. Because you actually have to pick, build your own schedule yes. for the week. Mm -hmm. Now, what's, what are, do you have one thing you always look at? Like I know that there are some students who don't like 8 a.m. classes. There are other students who don't like to bunch their classes together. Mm -hmm. And there are some students that set up their schedule so that they don't have any classes on Tuesdays. Yeah. So do you have a... Um, okay, a couple of things that I've, that I've realized or picked up on over the past couple of years is that people, um, some people are allergic to 8.30 classes. And 8.30 is the earliest that you can have a class, um, generally speaking. There might be like labs earlier than that in rare circumstances, but uh, some people are extremely against 8.30 classes. I happen to not mind them that much because... Um, I've had semesters where the majority of my classes all happened in the morning from 8.30 to, let's say, like 11.30 being the latest one. And it's not that bad because you get a lot of your work done out of the way or out of the way in the morning and then you have the afternoon for, let's say, working on projects and stuff. Um, some people who are working part-time during school make a point of scheduling all of their classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So um, that they can work the off days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the way that it's the way that it's set up at UPEI in particular is that uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday classes are uh, fifty minute classes, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, um, or sorry, Tuesday, Thursday classes are longer. I think they're sixty five minutes, oh, okay. or maybe a bit long, maybe seventy five minutes. Um, mm -hmm. Either way, it makes it easier if you're working or if you have other things on your plate. It makes it a lot easier sometimes to. Um, to just have all your courses on Tuesday and Thursday and then and then spend the other days either studying or working. Cool. 
cool. So those are, that's some of the inside the inside look at how those choices get made because you know what some people will say oh yeah never take the morning classes and you get to stay up late and stuff but if you're a morning person and you can get all your stuff if you're all your classes are done by eleven o'clock in the morning you got the rest of the day to pick and do whatever you want you know mm -hmm. so there's something really nice about that I guess that makes sense that wouldn't have been me I'm not the morning person I would have uh, yeah it wouldn't have worked out for me different strokes different folks so. Uh, let's take a, a little bit of a, a turn here and talk about, uh, you know, some of the other activities that we do on campus. I mean, for me, the reason why you would go to a university and not sort of do the cl classes online all the time and stuff is for all the other stuff that happens on campus. So what can you tell me about the choices that you've made about stuff that, that you do on campus around things like societies? I know you're in the student union and stuff now. So what are some of the choices you've made? Um, for me... Uh, in particular, well, I happen to come into uh, TP, yeah, knowing a lot of people that were already there for a year or two. I took a, a gap year and I came in. Um, gap, tell us what a gap year is. Gap year, basically just, you know, taking a year off after high school um, to either work or do something other like what I did. I did the Katimovic program, um, which we won't go into in, into too depth, but it's a volunteer program that took a year up between um, high school and university. So I came in, I had a lot of fr friends from high school already going to UPEI, and some of them worked for the, uh, the school newspaper, or the student union's newspaper, which is called The Cadre. So I uh, kind of signed up uh, to write for The Cadre, and for the first two years at UPEI, I did, um, yes, I did that. Um, I also got involved with student politics or the, the student union in my first year. I was the first year representative for the UPEI student union. Um, now, both of those things, both the, the paper and being on council have, have uh, stuck around in my, in my life. Right now, I'm one of the executive for the student union. And, uh, well, I guess this year I'm not writing for the paper because that's a bit of a conflict of interest. Yeah, because um, I'm the executive. But so, I'm still kind of involved. So Let's talk to me about that first day. You, there's the um, the UPEI campus newspaper. You got a bunch of guys who are 22, 23 years old who are in there, who are the editors, who are you know been at the school forever. How do you get to the point where you walk in the door and you go, I want to mm. write for the newspaper? Um, well, luckily uh, this year, like this year and last year, and hopefully in the, in the years to come, we're we're providing a lot more st structure to the way that societies are like organized on campus. So, um, uh, mo most of the societies on campus, if I, by society I mean, like, you know, let's say there's a, a French club or a, a, a society that, that kind of relates to a, a discipline or a department, um, a lot of them are registered under the student union, and this year during new student orientation, which is um, your, first, your first week on campus, basically, um, they actually had a society fair, and in the case for the cadre, the cadre was actually there, kind of represented, and their editor, Garrett, was there. He actually lugged the desk from the cadre office oh, upstairs, but put it in the elevator and brought it down to the society fair and set it up with, like, a, a phone, and a, he made it look like it was the actual cadre office. So long story short, um, at, in the, at the first, with let's say within the first month of you arriving at UPEI, if you... Uh, take part in the orientation process you will be um, you like you will have all of the societies kind of displayed in front of you at some point so okay so what other so you're saying that you walked up and he was like yeah sure you can join and then he did what who's he the the guy that the first year of the newspaper they just say okay now you're writing for the newspaper Mm, there's an application process, but there's also, the, well, for the cadre, it's pretty informal if you want to, because there are volunteer writers, yep. uh, and then there are paid reporters. So in my first year, I wrote a uh, an article called <laughs> The Relationship Rabbi, and I just did that volunteering, and it was literally like, okay, um, deadline is this day, we had meetings every week or so, um, deadline is this day, submit your article to the email address, and then it'll be in the paper. Um, but then later on, if you want to be, let's say a paid, uh, reporter, I'll say that the pay isn't, isn't great, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's just an application process. You apply to the student union, 
Um, and in the position that you want, you just put put in cadre reporter. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, so if you, why would anybody want to do this? Why am I going to take my spare time and go and do stuff for the cadre? Or get in any of these groups? Why am yeah. I going to go ahead and do that? Um, and that was one of the things that I thought of in, in my first, let's say my first year. Because even, even registering as a counselor, I was thinking, well, I don't want to be too busy with school. I, I want to make sure that I'm going to be able to to keep up with all of this. Yeah. And I think um, I just happened to be comfortable with the, like my course load, my, my workload, and um, decided that I wanted to be involved. So it would be worth it to put the extra time in. Because in the end, like I would say most of the people that come out of UBEI experience or let's say university experience in general – really happy with with their experience are most often the ones that were involved in ways other than just you know going to school and working on their projects handing them in and then walking home or going home afterwards it's the people that are that are involved in societies and clubs and you know student council and writing for the paper or writing for the yearbook those are the ones that enjoy it the most and as much as i am in university to um to get something out of it i'm well, if that's the thing. That's getting something out of it. Um, most graduates, I would I would imagine, would would tell you, uh, and people hear it all the time, that it's a lot about the most of it is about about the experience. Maybe not most of it, but um, a lot of it is <laughs> you about learn a the few the things at the same yeah. time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the the last of the three parts of the things that we're talking about, and we're about twenty minutes into the session right now, so I'm hoping to wrap up in about five or six minutes and close off the video there, so we can post that. Um, Josh, just a full disclosure here. Josh has worked for me at the university. I work, um, my name's Dave. I work in the integrated communications department. I do a lot of the web stuff on, on campus. And so can you, uh, and I mean, tough maybe with me sitting here looking over your shoulder, but can you tell me what kinds of, tell me about that job and how that fit into the work that you did. So you did some work for me last spring, for instance, mm -hmm. during the, like, at the end of the term and then into the summer. So why don't you tell me a little bit about that process? Well, do you want to t do you want me to talk about like working on campus in general? Or sure, that start there. Okay. Well, I I might be a bit um, I, I don't want to say um, well it's, some people work on campus a lot. Some people never have a paying position on campus. Obviously, that changes person to person. Yeah. I happen to have a job in like every possible place on campus. It seemed <laughs> so. I, I started off working for. Uh, well, working for the cadre, I guess, and then I did um, one of my friends, uh, Kate Van Gerven, who's also worked for Integrated Communications, um, worked as a campus tour guide with student services. So at one point, um, I was, well, I still am employed with them, giving, giving campus tours every once in a while. Um, I worked for the cadre, and then in my second year, I worked for Integrated Communications... <laughs> doing stuff for Dave and now I'm in a paid position at the student union so there are a bunch of different like working on campus you can uh, you can get positions marking exams like when you're in, up, in your upper level years you can get positions marking exams for professors or you can work at let's say like a cafe on campus or you can work um, in, in the bookstore in the sports center um, you don't really have to look too far to find job positions open on campus and the university tells you about them they go through the sounds exhausting yeah like do you get like totally exhausted with all this stuff all the time like do you just walk home and fall down um it depends do you look it, like it comes guy? in waves sometimes <laughs> wouldn't be yeah sometimes um yeah and you spend especially once you get into working on campus you end up spending amazing amounts of time on campus one thing that um if if um, one thing that I would mention the difference between high school and university in terms of stuff like this is the amount of time you spend on campus, especially if you get into working on campus or something. I um, I went from spending you know uh, let's say eight thirty or eight fifteen until three o'clock every weekday um, at high school to going from like eight o'clock till midnight or three a.m quite often at a university if that changes that's one of the big things oh wow that sounds like a lot of work yeah so tell me something um talk to me about the the job that you did say the one that you did for me 
and how does that round out the thing like the university experience because one of the things that um that we talk about about universities is that you know while you go to university maybe you learn a lot of stuff in class but how does that prepare you for it <laughs> somebody in the chat room just said learning is hard work fair enough um but how does that how did that experience what did you learn from that experience working in our office um i would say the biggest thing that i learned from it was it's given me a better perspective of exactly how the university works, how it functions. Because from a student um, pr perspective, let's say in my first year when I didn't know as much about how the university works, it's all kind of confusing. You don't really know the difference between, um, like, what's the registrar's office? Are they, oh, I'm trying to think of examples. For example, the student union is its own separate organization. It's not part of the university. Yes, the building's on campus, but it's not part of the university what is like who's the president of the university what is the, what are all the vice presidents um like what do they do what does integrated communications do what is integrated com communications mm -hmm. like it just it gives you everything in context a little bit more um that's kind of unique to the position because what i did um working in ic as we call it, integrated communications you're, you're constantly in contact with all the different departments around campus mm -hmm. but um, it gives you a bit more context of how things work and it also um, puts you in uh, puts you in contact and like greater contact more consistently with um, professionals in, in the university so do you figure that you have a better sense of how you would work at a different job like coming out of university for having worked in our shop and worked for the cadre did you learn things about working in those positions? Not for the cadre, I wouldn't say. <laughs> but, um, but yes, I um, I would say that it gives you... Well, I don't particularly see myself going into some kind of um, web communications position, but mm -hmm. it definitely gave me insight as to how the department works. Yeah, and how, yeah. Well, uh, that covers sort of the stuff that, that I wanted to... Uh, I wanted to do around those things. And I have one last question for you. I'm going to call this a wrap-up question. Um, if you could go back and talk to you in the October before you actually registered for, for university, before you went, and something that would help you have a better first year experience and have that, like, pull all that stuff together a little bit better, what would you tell that Josh, other than get a haircut? Um, don't miss the first day of new student orientation and don't waste time taking those English courses because I, I see I can't tell myself that because I I know things it's it's not fair I, um yeah I don't know let's let's say don't miss the first day of NSO be more involved in new student orientation because I, I missed like half the events for that yeah and it's funny the new school the new student orientation does do an awful lot of that structuring you know for me when I look back on it I didn't use any of the services leading up to university and sort of started with just random courses yeah. and no real idea of why I was doing the stuff I was doing. I just kind of picked them because I was kind of in a rush. And I didn't realize that you could get hold of the university and say, you know, hey, tell me, um, okay, tell me what I can do. Where'd you go to school? At Dow. At Dow. Okay. Yeah. Back in 1992 is when I started university. Two years after I was born. Two years after you were born. Join NSO. Uh, new student orientation orientation I think use the services whatever university you're talking about and then the last one that I would say is just get involved I mean realistically one of the things that I can say for sure about our university is that all those societies and clubs are looking for more people to get engaged with them the student union wants more people engaged with them and your whole experience at the university changes entirely yeah once you step out because that for the and, better and it's actually going to help as long as you're controlled and don't join everything, um, you're going to have more people to work with, more people to study with, and more of those sort of connections that make the university experience what it is. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Josh. You're welcome. Thank you. It's very lovely to chat with you today. Uh, thanks for you guys uh, for coming out. And uh, we're going to take this recording and post it on the YouTubes and put it up there for people to see it. Um, we're going to come back next week. We're going to holler, get a hold of a professor to get involved, and we're going to hopefully do a little bit of back and forth Q and A with that. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see where it goes from there. Sweet. Okay. Cheers, everybody.